Hey everyone, welcome to another top 10 list. This week's top 10 list uh, is, it was, a, it was a fun one for me because these are the top 10 notes that I own that I had to buy the moment I heard about them. Okay, these are notes that I may have been looking through a book, I may have spotted, a, I may have watched a video, I may have spotted a story, and I was fascinated by the story, and I had to get the note. So these weren't notes that I went and hunted down over the course of weeks, months, or years. These were notes that I bought on the spot because the story was that cool and I had to get them. Or because the note was that cool, whatever the case is, the second I learned of it, had to buy it. All right, number 10. This is my 1862 $2 legal tender. Uh, the 1862 versions are the very first versions of our currency that was put out by our government. They made a one, a two, and well, one of the things I learned about this particular one was this right here. You can see how they've got a one, and this being the $2 note has a two, and the two is highlighted, and it also had the three. Now, that implies that they were going to make a $3 bill. I had the one, and I didn't think much of this particular design at the time, but when I learned that the $2 bill had the two highlighted, then I had to run out and get one of these because that confirmed my belief that they intended on having a $3 bill as well. Um, I also have a little bit of a background with Greyhound racing and horse racing. So the fact that the $2 bill is inspired by the need of a $2 bet to keep the riffraff out of the track, um, I had to have the very first $2 bill ever issued. Here's the back of this one. This one does say repaired on it, probably glued. Can't really tell because it's in here, but that's fine because to me, it's a beautiful note. Well better than the 15 that it was graded at. So that is number 10 on the list, my 1862 $2 bill. Number nine, I was going through the top 100 and I saw this obsolete currency. This is the Louisiana $10 uh, Citizens Bank of Louisiana note. You'll know it by a much different name. You'll know it as the Dix note. The Dix note. What makes this note so cool? Well, uh, traders would be going down the Mississippi on their barges, and they would be heading to Louisiana to trade all their goods, hopefully getting pocketfuls of these. What did they call these particular notes? Well, because it said D-I-X on the back, they called these notes Dixies. And where would you go to get Dixies? Well, Dixies must come from Dixieland. So that is how the South got the nickname Dixieland. Um, people will say that uh, the Mason-Dixon line also played a part in it. Um, yes, no. When I think of Dixieland, I'm thinking way down south in Dixie. I'm not thinking about way up north in Illinois slash Tennessee slash Kentucky, uh, which are definitely southern states, but they are definitely in the center of the country. Um, when you're talking way down south in Dixie, you're talking Louisiana, specifically New Orleans, where they have the Dixies. Anyway, that is number nine on the list. Had to get that. Number eight. My friend Emmanuel from Emmanuel's Workbench showed one of these notes, and I was blown away. Uh, this is a 1975 Canadian $50 bill from Bank of Canada. Take a, le take a quick look at this note. Look at all the color. It's just such a beautiful note. The thought of having to engrave all of that and get the colors right when you do the printing, I don't even want to think about how that was done. All I know it was done well, that, that's for sure. Uh, really, really cool note. And if the 50 in Canada is anything like the 50 in the U.S., that means that this is a denomination that's not spent very much. Therefore, there aren't a lot of them to be had. It's just the way it goes. People tend to use 20s. If people have 100, they will break it for 20s, not necessarily 250s. And this was in 75. Even today in 2023, I can't tell you how many times I see stores that say we do not accept bills larger than 20. So yeah, a 50 is not a well-circulated bill. But I didn't get this because it was a 50. I got it because this is the back of the note. 
that is just so cool the circle of mounties uh the reds you can see the gold highlights in there just a spectacular note so I had to get one that was graded. I also picked up one or two more of these so that they can show up in my auctions from time to time because as infatuated as I am with the note, I know you guys are too. So we'll be getting some of those out to you guys as well. That one is number eight on the list. Number seven. This is a CSA. This is a Confederate States of America note. It is a $1 note and you can see here it's from 1862. 1862, $1 CSA. Now, these notes, especially the low denominations, were heavily, heavily circulated. Because of that, it's very difficult to find these in good shape. Um, that's uh, Lucy Pickens is pictured on there. Now, these particular notes, like I said, as circulated as they were, there was a shorter print version of these, and that happens to be the one with the green overprint. You can see the green one right here, and it's got the, uh, the digit one right there as well. They only did the overprint in the later half, and uh, there's nothing printed on the back of these, by the way. Because of that, now you're talking about a, a lower denomination, which is heavily circulated, and a shorter run with the overprint makes these very tough to find. Uh, when you find these in good condition, they can be five, six, seven hundred dollars because there just aren't that many that were printed that survived. So when I heard about the green overprint, I ran out and picked one up immediately just so that I could have one because I knew if I did a video on these, other people would want to get, would want to jump on the bandwagon as well. Uh, so I wanted to get one at a good price before things started to go crazy. That is the $1 green overprint CSA from 1862. Number six on the list. Well, if there's a $1, there's also a $2. This is called the Slayer Note. Uh, same series as the $1 note. This one features the South slaying the Union. That's why it's called the Slayer. And you can see this one also has the overprint as well. Now this note and the one both were widely available without the overprint, but the one you're looking for has the overprint. This note in uncirculated condition uh, can easily be over $1,000. So yeah, th this is probably the keynote of the two, the $2 with the green overprint from 1862. I believe it says June 2nd right there, June 2nd, 1862. This one is the second series, which is actually wrong. It's a third series note. Um, it's one of the varieties out there. It's not that this is an error, it's a variety. So that one is number six, 10, nine, eight, seven, number six, yes. Number five. Number five is my $1 1869 legal tender. Now this one is a little different because I was aware of the Rainbow Series. 1869 Rainbow Series has the blue that fades into the gray. You've got the red. I know on this paper it looks yellow, the paper itself, uh, and the black as well as the green on the back. That's why it's called a rainbow. You get all of those colors. But when I first heard of the rainbows, I immediately dismissed ever owning them because of how high their prices were. So, and because I see so many notes from uh, 1917 with this, just without the rainbow, I just kind of dismissed ever actually getting a rainbow. And then I saw one on eBay and the seller happened to be fairly local. So the day that I saw this on eBay, I had to have it. I contacted the seller, actually met the seller, and got the note in person. Now, some of you will notice that it's got a star there. Uh, all of them had stars. This is not a star note. But uh, I did send this one out to get graded. Uh, no, this one was graded when I got it, graded 25. Uh, that's why I had to get it, because I saw the grade, I saw the price, and it was a golden opportunity that I just could not pass up. So that one is number five. Number four. This is an 1880 $10 legal tender, also known as the Jackass Note. How do you not run out and get a note when they call it the Jackass Note? <laughs> uh, this features um, Daniel Webster and the 1880 $10 legal tender features this little eagle right here. Take a quick peek at the back just so you can see what that one is. 
Now that eagle, you can see it's perched, its wings are spread, it's about to take flight, it's looking back as if it was startled. That is a very interesting picture of an eagle. More so because when you rotate that picture of the eagle, like this, the eagle's head becomes a white muzzle, and there is an eye, and you can see an ear, you can see a mane, that's a donkey otherwise known as a jackass back in the day. So yeah, that's how this note became known as the jackass note, because of the picture of the eagle that's on there that you could rotate. When I heard that that was out there, I wasted no time, bought it that day, <laughs> and couldn't wait for it to come in the mail. Uh, that one is number four on the list. Number three. This is a 1759 Delaware Colonial note. It's probably the oldest note I have. I don't think I've got anything that predates 1759. Now, as cool as that is, that's not why I bought this note. Uh, it was brought to my attention that some guy by the name of... Where is it on here? Where is it? I'll find it. There we go. PR, as in printed by... And then as you read through the letters, you can see the A-N-K-L-I. This note was printed by Benjamin Franklin. Nowhere does it say on the grade printed by Benjamin Franklin. Now, when I found out that this particular note, uh, Delaware 1759, was printed by Benjamin Franklin... I went looking for it and found this one immediately, did not argue with the price, and I got this note for probably about $100 because it doesn't say printed by Benjamin Franklin on it. It says it right on the note. If you can if you can uh, find your way through all this stuff, where is it? Where did I? Yeah, I showed it right there. You can see the A-N-K-L-I from Franklin. So yeah, it most certainly was printed by Benjamin Franklin. To have something that Benjamin Franklin printed, I can't... <laughs> I mean, how much cooler does it get? So yeah, when I learned that he had printed some of these notes, I went on a quest to find it, and this is what came up. Yeah, I could have probably waited to find a better one, but that would have been much more expensive. Had to have this, bought it immediately. That one is number three. Number two on the list. This is my 1886 silver certificate. Uh, features Ulysses S. Grant, the $5 silver certificate. This one is called the Morganback. You can see why. It has five Morgan silver dollars on it. And one of the things that makes this more famous is the fact that you can read the back of the coins, which does say, In God We Trust. So it's one of the first appearances of In God We Trust on our notes. It's interesting that our coins had the phrase way back then, but we didn't put it on our money until the 1950s, so our money was more constitutional than our silver. Anyway, uh, this note was interesting because it says piece added, seal faded, and if you look real close, you can see right here that there is a piece added and colored to make it look right, but if you look just right, you can see it's definitely not. I mean, very cool, but no, it's not quite right. You can see better on the front right here. That's where the hole is when the piece was added. And this had the seal over here, but you can see how the seal has been faded away. I bought this because I was looking for one of these, and this was the only one that was there. Uh, no, there was there was a few of them that were there, but this one was only like $700. And uh, I bought it, and I held my breath hoping it was real. I sent it in for grading. This was the grade it got, and it turns out that it, I was correct. It is real. <laughs> Not a lot of people are willing to throw $700 away on a chance that it might be real. But yeah, this note, if this note's uncirculated, you're talking forty to $60,000. Um, in this condition, maybe $1,500 to $2,000. But to have a note, like I said, it's forty to sixty k, that's pretty impressive. Anyway, that one is number two. Had to have it. And number one on the list this week... You guys remember the story. This is a $10,000 gold certificate. $10,000 gold certificate. Uh, Act of 1900 is what put this into play. This particular one is November 22nd, 1916. These were worth $10,000 uh, in gold coin. 
because they had $20 gold coins back in the day. Each of those were approximately an ounce of gold. You'd need 500 of those to equate to this particular note. It is much easier to carry this note than it is to carry 500 ounces of gold. That's why this note came to be. But in 1933, a law was passed saying that gold was no longer going to be our currency and gold certificates must be redeemed or they would become worthless. All the gold certificates were redeemed, this one included, and they were stored at the post office in Washington, D.C. In 1935, that post office caught fire. Someone knew these notes were in there and started throwing them out the window. So now you have a building on fire, you've got the fire department there trying to put out the fire, and you've got $10,000 bills fluttering down into the streets, landing into puddles, some of them catching on fire. <clears throat> you can see this one has smoke and fire damage to it. Uh, the black here, this is actually just tape, and I haven't really tried to get any of that stuff off. I don't want to mess with it too much. But anyway, people would grab these off the street and the next day tried to take them to the bank and redeem them, where they found that these are not redeemable. So whenever people tell you, yeah, any money the government has printed is still worth face value, here's $10,000 that isn't. So <laughs> I'm not buying that one at all. Anyway, when I heard the story of the post office being uh, catching fire and these notes being thrown out, I had to get this note. I was very happy that the fact that this one had burn damage on it made the price less. To me, it should have made it more because, well... These were available because of the fire. There's your evidence of the fire. Um, yeah, I didn't want a crisp one. I wanted one that showed a little character. Anyway, that one is number one on my list. If you learned anything new this week, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe. Love reading all your comments. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.